The speaker is David Huang, who is the Weeks Professor of Ophthalmic Research at KCI Institute, Oregon Health and Science University, and he will be talking about new developments in optical coherence tomography for ophthalmology. Thank you. I just moved to Portland four months ago, and the quality of life is great. That view of Mount Hood is literally from my window. Um, so I'm going to talk about OCT and the eye. They are a match made in heaven. You know, the eye has very thin layers, uh, retina and cornea, that require the high resolution of OCT and the clear media that uh, allows the light to pass through. And that's why, uh, since the beginning of OCT, uh, in, in uh, Professor Fujimoto and Professor uh, Fersher's groups, uh, uh, the retina and cornea has been the primary targets of research. And ophthalmic uh, publications still dominate OCT li uh, literature. And you can see that uh, both within and outside ophthalmology, there has been rapid growth. So the most important change in the recent year has been the uh, introduction of Fourier domain OCT. Commercially, that happened around uh, 2006, uh, and the main uh, uh, improvement is in speed, 50 to 100 times in general, uh, and also improvement in resolution. It's like going from a, uh, a World War I biplane to a jet airplane in terms of the, the speed, and this makes three-dimensional imaging possible and, in fact, uh, commonplace now in the ophthalmic practice. Uh, five micron resolution is now standard, allowing you to see uh, most of the layers of the retina. And even uh, what's called ultra-high resolution OCT now is commercially available. Uh, the number one application of OCT remains in the retina clinic. Uh, the advent of uh, antibodies that block uh, VEGF or va vascular endothelial growth factor has allowed the treatment of wet age-related macular degeneration, the number one uh, blinding uh, disease uh, in industrialized country that was previously uh, pretty much untreatable. Now this drug is injected into the eye, into the vitreous, about once a month. And that's a daunting uh, prospect for a patient to, to have one injection a month for the rest of uh, his or her life. So OCT is used to assess the results uh, on a regular basis to determine if another injection is needed. And that, that is a very high volume uh, application. Glaucoma is another common disease, and there has been uh, improvement in the software to measure the tissues that's affected by glaucoma, the nerve fiber layer around the optic nerve head, and the ganglion cell map. And these allow detection of uh, loss of tissue uh, even before the visual field become abnormal. Uh, the FDOCT systems on the market now uh, for retinal scanning can usually be also adapted for corneal uh, scanning uh, using a lens or some, sometime not uh, even without an additional lens. And this has uh, uh, additional applications uh, from detection of narrow angle glaucoma to uh, keratoconus, to routine measurements in LASIK procedures, to uh, planning of uh, laser treatment for scars and other corneal uh, procedures. OCT is also moving into the operating room. Uh, on the left, you see a uh, FDOCT system, uh, a compact system that's mounted on a stand that's being used to uh, examine a, a patient in the operating room. This is particularly useful in infants and uh, children. Uh, for example, in the lower left, you can see an uh, evaluation of uh, a corneal scar that's congenital, Peter's anomaly, allowing you to visualize pathology deep in the cornea and in the lens. And more recently, the uh, OCT has been incorporated into femtosecond laser uh, systems to develop for cataract surgery. This is kind of a very hot topic in ophthalmology. Uh, and it's been implemented on two different company systems. Uh, and this is a very cool uh, a video from Professor uh, Izat's uh, collaboration with Dr. Uh, Toth at Duke. And uh, uh, the software was provided by Bioptogen, allowing uh, real-time imaging during uh, vitreal retinal surg uh, surgery to uh, guide uh, the procedure itself. Very exciting. Uh, so all these advances in technology, uh, 
ha and, and clinical application has led to a rapid growth in diagnostic procedure volume. Uh, you, you can see uh, it's almost exponential growth uh, over the recent years. And uh, now uh, OCT and other uh, computerized scanning imaging has far surpassed uh, fundus photography and fluorescent angiography in terms of Medicare billing. And this has led to a, a larger and larger industry. Uh, by 2009, there's more than 17,000 ophthalmic OCT systems placed and uh, uh, projected more than a billion dollar of uh, cumul cumulative sales in this area. So of course, when uh, Medicare and the insurance companies see a lot of billing, they try to discourage that. And uh, Medicare has proposed a cut of about 60% when you take into account that a new price is going to be for both eyes rather than one eye. And of course, this is a, a big dark cloud uh, over uh, both ophthalmic practice and, and uh, companies that uh, make OCT systems. I think they can cope, but the, the imaging systems really must be cheap. Uh, easy to use, and have uh, many functions, many applications uh, for patients. The next generation of ophthalmic OCT systems may use different technologies. You know, the, the current systems are all based on spectrometers that operate at 830 nanometers. But to uh, get more speed and penetration, we uh, may go to different uh, uh, wavelength and different uh, uh, operating principles. This is swept source OCT at 1050 nanometers, uh, giving you higher speed so you can get really tremendous detail uh, over a broad area. Uh, this is from uh, Martin Krauss, uh, 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 Professor Horniger at University of Erlangen, and Professor Fujimoto at MIT. Uh, and this slide from uh, uh, Professor Wolfgang Drexler uh, shows that there are uh, two water windows that we operate at uh, in the 800s and between uh, 1,000 and 1,100 nanometers for OCT. And of course, at the longer wavelength, you have less scattering, so you can penetrate through cataracts and the uh, retinal pigment epithelium better. And this allows you to image the choroid and the lamina cribosa uh, better, giving you deeper penetration. The, this site shows that you can see all the way through the choroid to the sclera in a lightly pigmented eye and even in a darkly pigmented eye that has more scattering in the retinal pigment epithelium. Uh, in the anterior segment, uh, 1050 nanometer can provide you with uh, about equivalent resolution to an 800 nanometer system showing you a Schlem's canal, a very small structure, and at the same time allowing you enough penetration to see, see the scleral spur. So that's also very exciting. OCT is also moving beyond just measuring structures uh, to measuring function in, uh, in uh, retinal angiography and uh, blood flow. So uh, this is a Doppler uh, retinal angiography from uh, Professor Isaac's group at uh, uh, Duke uh, showing uh, uh, really measurements in many uh, different uh, uh, places on the retina, uh, including the uh, foveal avascular, avascular zone. Uh, this was actually a very complex slide. Uh, I apologize to uh, Joe that I removed some of them for the interest of time. Um, and uh, this is from uh, uh, Professor Ricky Wong's uh, a group where uh, using uh, a technique called OMAC, also based on a Doppler uh, principle. You can see, map the uh, uh, microvascular uh, network uh, all the way from the retina down to the, uh, the large vessel layer of the choroid. And again, using a high-speed system. Uh, this is dual beam, dual beam uh, Doppler angiography from Professor Yasuno's group. Uh, probing deeper into the choroid, you can see polypoidal choroidal vasculopathy, which is a uh, major uh, cause of blindness in the Asian population. So this is actually useful in probing disease. Uh, this is from uh, Professor Johannes de Boer's group showing you pulsation in choroidal uh, vessels. And uh, we have developed a, a dual 
circular scan pattern that allow you to uh, map and measure all the uh, vessels coming out of optic nerve head and measure the total retinal blood flow. And this has allowed us to uh, see the abnormality uh, in uh, glaucoma, uh, optic neuropathy, and diabetic retinopathy uh, in total retinal blood flow. Uh, if you have very high speed, you can also do unfast imaging to uh, quantify blood flow uh, for the whole eye uh, without knowing the Doppler angle. So this may be more robust. So OCT is in a virtual cycle of growth uh, with new technology and new applications but the clamp on reimbursement may limit innovation in the marketplace. So there will be more of a gap between the laboratory and the marketplace, uh, as I would predict. Thank you.